Welcome back to another chicken video. Today I'm going to be showing you how to try to repel pests like flies and spiders. Let's check on some of the sprouts from my previous videos. As we head over to where I'm going to show you how to make this. Weeds, I'll have to pull those. But you might be thinking, why would you want to get rid of spiders? They're really beneficial. And yes, in a lot of ways they are. Normally if I see spiders, I'll leave them alone. If they're outside, of course, don't want them in my house. But they are really good because they will obviously make webs and they will eat other insects that are harmful. They'll eat mosquitoes, they'll eat all kinds of stuff, they'll catch flies. So I do like them for that. But we have an overabundance of spiders in our backyard and I'm extremely allergic to them. I got bit by one two summers ago and I thought I was going to end up in the hospital. I was so sick, I was full on delirious. It was really scary. And I've been finding a lot of spiders in my coop, which makes it very scary for me when it's time to clean the coop. And yes, chickens will eat spiders, but there's just too many of them here. So I'm going to show you how to make a spray for that. These are my onions, by the way. And this spray is not only to help repel spiders, it's also going to help repel other things that you don't want, such as ticks and mosquitoes, and potentially even rodents. So I haven't tried it out yet, but I have, hey, Eva, don't eat the helicopters. Anyways, I've heard really good things about this mix, so we're going to give it a try. All right, so here we are. We're going to make the repel mix. It's all 100% natural, so it's totally safe to use around your pets and your chickens. You can use it in the coop, obviously. That's why we're doing this. Don't mind all the cushions sitting up because we had a ton of rain, so they're just drying out. So don't mind the odd setup. But let's get started. So it's really easy to make. You just need a plastic or a glass bottle to hold it in. Spray bottle. That way it's easy to apply. And for this one, since I just have a small bottle, we're only going to do one cup of water. Next, we're gonna add six drops of pure peppermint oil, and you can add a few extra if you want. It won't hurt anything. I'm actually gonna make mine a little bit stronger. All right, we did nine. You can also add lemongrass oil if you want, that won't hurt. You can do citrus oil. I'm gonna put in a little bit of lavender too, just because I heard that lavender helps repel rodents and mosquitoes. A little bit of lemon. And this smells really good to us and the chickens won't mind it, so. It'll be good for everyone. Oh, and by the way, I'm also going to be planting an herb garden around the chickens, and I'll be making hanging baskets with all kinds of different plants that are supposed to help repel rodents and bugs. I'm going to hang them out of the chickens' reach, so make sure you subscribe so you can stay tuned to see how I do that. It'll look really pretty, too, and it'll smell nice. Now, knock on wood, I don't really have a rodent problem. I never really have. I've been very lucky with that. But we're outside, there's chickens, they obviously eat feed, so I like to take, I guess, like a precaution when it comes to that, just in case, because I don't want the rodents to show up, because I know some people, once they do show up, they have a really hard time getting rid of them. So if you can try to avoid a problem from the start, that's always the best way to handle something. So now we're just going to mix this up. Oh, spilled a little bit. Don't do it quite as fast as I just did. Oh, you can hear my chicken squawking. Someone must have laid an egg. They're singing the egg song down there. Alright, and now we're going to pour it in. Oh, honestly, I underestimated. I could have done two cups. So I'll do another one. But I'll do that later. That way I don't take up any more time here because you guys already get the hang of how you're supposed to mix it. And just give it another good shake once it's in there. And then Eva, come here. I'm actually going to put her in the house because she keeps trying to eat helicopter plants or seeds. I don't know if they're actually called that. That's just what I call them. All right, come on, let's go in. So 
So if you guys have seen some of my other videos, you may have seen the hack that I talked about where I put cardboard boxes under the roosts where the chickens perch at night to sleep inside of the coop. And it's really nice because that way when they go to the bathroom, it falls right in the box. And then you can either throw the whole thing in your compost bin or you could sprinkle it out on your, over your garden if you have a garden because chicken manure makes really, really, really good compost. And plus it makes the cleanup for the coop so much faster and easier because all you have to do is take out the box. You don't have to be bent over shoveling and raking and wasting all that bedding. So I always keep cardboard boxes in. I just switch them out as I need to. So the last time I was cleaning the coop, I found a lot of spiders hanging out on the box. Now this won't kill them, it'll just repel them. So what I'm gonna do is, and don't mind that, that's just a little bit of dirt in here because I was carrying some plants I was transplanting in this, so a little dirt won't hurt them because manure's gonna go in here anyway. So I'm just gonna spray just around it. I'll do this to all the boxes I'm gonna put in there. And then you can also spray this in the coop, around the coop, anywhere where you see a lot of pests hanging out. And it actually smells really good. But they say that uh, like flies, mosquitoes, mice, rats, rabbits, chipmunks, they hate peppermint, they hate citrus. So it's a nice, natural, safe way to try to keep down the pests. And apparently spiders hate this, so it'll be good for me. It'll make it safer when I have to go into the coop. So yeah, I'm gonna clean the coop this weekend, put this in, I'll spray around the coop, and hopefully it works. I will let you know if it does. So make sure you subscribe. And you can use this in your house too. If you have pests in your house or around your house or if you're just trying to prevent them. So if you've seen some of my other videos, I started the big garden. And we've had like a week, maybe a week and a half straight of terrible weather. It was so cold, rain nonstop really bad wind it, it looks like it's still a little chilly today but not terrible it looks like next week it's gonna finally be nice again so i have to get a lot more work done i'm behind and i hate being behind so the next several days are going to be extremely busy for me non-stop but you can see how much these are thriving and growing with all that rain that we got and we did need the rain but i mean it was excessive but look how nice they look i'm so happy and if you didn't see that video, make sure you check it out. But this is broccoli, cauliflower. We got purple cauliflower, white, and orange growing up here. Uh-oh. This one doesn't look so hot. We'll see if it pulls through. As you can see, we did lose a couple, but that just happens. Most of them look great. And then I did plant my peppers. Uh, we had some really bad hail. Actually, I'll show you that video. I'll put that in. So you can see the peppers did really, really take a beating actually, but they will outgrow it. That is the one plus that this happened so early on in the season that the plants are so young that they should outgrow it. Obviously they're not bearing any fruit yet, which is great because last year when we had that freak tornado incident and the hail came right before, it was right as my tomatoes, they, they were green, they weren't ripe yet, but the tomatoes were huge and getting close to ripening and the hail ruined it. And I, cause I sell what I grow and I had to heavily discount those tomatoes for a while once they finally ripened. It made my customers happy because they got really cheap tomatoes. They weren't that pretty, but they tasted great. So they were happy about that, but it, it was devastating for me. But I mean, we recovered. But yeah, besides the little bit of hail damage, everything's looking pretty good. I have my squash, zucchini, cucumbers, melons, all that stuff. I planned ahead, oh, and my sweet corn, and I planted in big trays because I knew, I, you know, if you have a garden or if you're farming, pay attention to the long-term forecast. And I knew we were going to have over a week of really, really cold, wet, windy, nasty weather. So I planned ahead and started those things inside 
so that way I wouldn't be behind. So I have all the sprouts ready to go. So this weekend or early next week, I'll go ahead and put them in the ground up here now that it's a little bit safer to do so. But I just wanted to update you guys on that in case you've been following along in this journey. And I'll be showing you how to plant plenty of other things too, so make sure you subscribe. And even if you're not a person that likes to eat vegetables, which I mean, you should because they're very healthy for you, but you could grow them for your chickens too and your chickens will love it and it's fun. And soon I'll be making my tomato video. I did plant all kinds of different flowers, zinnias, sunflowers, all along the edge. So this, in the summertime, will all be flowers along the whole perimeter. It's going to be really pretty. The weeds are starting to come up, so I'll have to get rid of those. And then I'll put down a garden safe pre-emergent after the flowers sprout to keep the weeds away. And it looks like some of my peas started to come up, but the germination rate is not great. And everything could just be slowed down because it's been so cold. But either way, I'm gonna come through and replant these, just in case. Strawberry hanging baskets are looking good. The beans are coming up. Oh, this is fake, by the way. It's to help keep the rabbits and the chipmunks away. It's been working so far. All right, we're back at the chickens. I've said this before, I'm just really behind, but I will be getting that done this week coming up, but the big chicken cleanup is gonna happen. So I'm gonna clean this, pressure wash it, put the mulch down in the run and make it look really, really pretty and nice in here. I'll show you how to do the herbs and the flowers and the pest repellent plants. But in the meantime, since it's coming up on cleaning day, I'll just spray this around, help keep everything away, and you can see they don't mind it at all. That's corn flour. It smells really nice. I know I keep saying that, but I like it. And yeah, chick season is winding down at my work, so we do have a couple batches left. Pheasants and French guineas will be coming, so I'll have videos on that. And then last week we got bantams. And bantams are a small braided chicken like my silky here, I'll show you. Right there. So I'll show you the footage from that because they were really cute. So here it is. Assorted bantams. Here's a silky. Because they're really fluffy, they have the black skin oh and fuzzy it's legs. So, so There's lots of silkies in here. That's good because they're always popular. Because silkies are so friendly. All these silkies are supposed to be white. Yeah. Oh, look at this one. That's not a silky. I'm not sure what that one is. Because bantams, they're basically just a mini type of chicken. So they all stay very tiny. They're more for like ornamental purposes or for pets or for showing. Because even though they still lay eggs, they don't produce as much. And the eggs are tiny. On here I have all the different possible mixes that could be in here. Look how cute. Silkies are one of my favorites. They're really sweet. Once it gets They're all huddled under here getting warmed up. Silkies originated in China and they say that their black skin is good luck and, and that it has healing properties.
I wonder if this one's a porcelain duque because of the fuzzy wigs. Its feet look giant compared to the rest of it. Oh, and the other feature for the silkies, see how they have the extra toe? That's another way that you can tell. Then we have three. Let's see in the back. Oh, there's one. Oh, oh my gosh, they have five. 